International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Quality and speed are our culture and the keys to our success. Welcome to the audio summary section of the International Journal of Health Policy and Management. Hello, I'm Roger Mark de Souza, the Director of Population, Environmental Security and Resilience at the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, D.C. And I'd like to provide a little bit of commentary on the recent article that I published in the International Health Policy Journal, A Little Bit of Sugar Helps the Pill Go Down, Resilience, Peace and Family Planning. And specifically, I'd like to talk about three uh, points in the article. First, why is family planning so important? Important, the overall development efforts. Two, second, what is being done? And three, the opportunity that it presents moving forward. So let's start with this first point, family planning. There's a little bit of contention around family planning at times, but research has demonstrated that family planning is cost effective. It produces quick results. It helps women and couples meet their desired fertility levels. And it provides a number of benefits that are around the environment, the economy, conservation, resilience, and peace building. And in order to capitalize on these benefits, these communities must embrace and communicate family planning's benefit to their sector. We know that peace building efforts can um, benefit from family planning efforts because they help to incorporate women as peace builders and help them to be actors and strengthen approaches against violent extremism. So it is very important. One way that we see this being done is through resilience programming. So we know that family planning is important. We also know that age and age structure and youth bulges is important. Uh, researchers uh, sometimes debate this issue. Some research has examined questions around the impact of income, ethnic um, um, heterogeneity, and type of political regime to examine to what degree they have an impact versus age structure. But we know that many policy responses have built upon research. Uh, for example, the National Intelligence Council in its Global Trends 2025 assessment talks about a demographic arc of instability looking at parts of the world where there is a predominance of population of under 25 years of age. The United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 builds on these kinds of approaches and seeks to engage women in conflict resolution and in efforts to counter violent extremism. So there are policy responses that are occurring uh, at an international level that are bringing women and demographic variables into peace building and resilience efforts. In addition, a number of programmatic approaches from donors that include joint assessments across sectors, increased flexible funding, commitments towards bridging the divide between development, humanitarian approaches, and directive communications from headquarters to field offices to build resilience and incorporate women and address population pressures. Today, we are looking at sustainable development goals, resilience efforts, and humanitarian responses. And this article suggests, recommends, and documents how family planning, demographic resilience, and overall development efforts must come together and must come together now.